The Batania Mounted Skirmisher is one of the two cavalry options of Batania, and before patch 1.8, this used to be one of the worst units in the game. Since then though, throwing units received quite a significant buff. With this said, let's see what equipment this unit brings and how it performs. The role of the Skirmisher is quite unique. Think of them as an alternative to horse archers, but instead of using arrows, they throw javelins. When used correctly and with the right buffs, these units can have a significant impact on any battle. From flanking to circling or even dismounted support, there is always going to be some way to make them effective. For cavalry I always like to start from the armor. In the case of the skirmisher it brings a respectable 46 head armor. And they have the same helmet of the falksman. This will be enough to place them 7 among cavalry. The body armor instead is just 40, combined between the rough scale male and the chain 4 cloak. This will be enough to rank the skirmisher in 7th place once again. When it comes to the horse and barding, the skirmisher brings a value of 280, and has the exact same combination of the horseman. This will rank the skirmisher in the middle of the pack at 5th. When considering head plus body, the skirmisher ranks 6th with a score of 86, but loses 1 position when we consider all armor types. With the armor out of the way, let's talk about the equipment. The most significant weapon of the skirmisher is one stack of hooked javelins that brings a base damage of 117. Not enough to one-shot heavily armored units without perks, but can make quick work of most mid to low tiers. The weapon length is also 85, a bit on the short side for a makeshift spear. And yes, in some situations they will end up using the javelin as a spear. Overall, a decent option. We can say the same when talking about the shield. The skirmisher brings a reinforced star, with 380 HP by a length of just 70. It brings the same downsides of the horseman. What about the sidearm? The skirmisher brings the same two melee weapons of the horseman. The first one is the one-handed bearded axe. It's a solid weapon, fast, deals a good amount of damage, and it's short. The second one is the fine cavalry broadsword. Not a very good weapon, honestly. It's on the slow side for a swinger. The damage is nice, but if you can swing fast enough, not really great. And it's a B on the long side for one of the infantry units, but quite nice for cavalry. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's get down to the stats. When considering the efficiency against archers, the skirmishers finished roughly in the middle with two sixth places and two fifth places, with a total KD of 4.06 and a KD of 89.76 versus low tiers. The skirmisher lost 21.38% of their units, and their average casualty chance against low tiers was 8.33%. When considering efficiency against spearmen, the skirmisher finished on the podium with 2 second places and 2 third places. The total KD of 61.94 and the KD versus low of 211.63. The skirmisher lost 1.48% of units and ended with an average casualty chance versus low of 0.4%. And finally, when considering the melee efficiency, the skirmisher ranked 7, with an average KD of 4.27 and a KD versus low of 37.45. The skirmishers ended up losing 32.24% of their units and averaged 4.08% casualty chance versus low tiers. It's a weird set of data to work with as it brings a lot of up and downs, but let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. The body armor is lacking. The horse armor is instead quite nice. They bring a bad shield, the lack of a spear is honestly a plus, the overall armor of the unit is on the low side, there is still a 50% chance of getting the good sidearm, they are quite bad in melee when dismounted, making them bad for sieges, they bring versatility with the javelins, since 1.8 javelins are a huge bonus, and in my opinion they have a strong affinity in a Batanian army. My final score is a 3 out of 5. It's an interesting unit that can see effective use on the battlefield, but it's far away from a reliable and good performer. They require micro and possibly a good captain build to get the best out of them, and they might be the best cavalry option in Batania. Batania Norseman is one of the two cavalry options of Batania, and it has the reputation of being an underwhelming unit. But is it really? Cavalry units in Banaro don't have it easy. They, in fact, have not just one, but two of the worst AIs in the game, the Lancer AI and the Horse AI. So in order to overcome such an handicap, these units need to be exceptionally good. Some can do it, others just lack behind. 
Pause the video now and give me your prediction on where you think this unit will land. The role of the horseman, like any other cavalry option, is generally to flank and strike the enemy from a vulnerable side. For cavalry, I think the first thing to cover is not their lance but their general armor instead. In the case of the Batanian horseman, it brings just 25 head armor and they have the same helmet of the wildlings. By this point, we know he runs in the Batanian family and the horseman ranks unsurprisingly last in this category. The body armor instead is a respectable 44, combined between the scale warlord armor and the male shoulder reinforcements. This will be enough to rank the horseman in 6th place among cavalry. Another important thing to consider when it comes to cavalry is the combination of the horse armor and the horse HP. This is more important than people give it credit for. A tanky horse combined with a sturdy armor can make the difference between a bad shock cavalry unit and a good one. In the case of the horseman, the combined value is 280, combined between the Batinian war mount and the half scale barding. This will rank the horseman in the middle of the pack at 5th. When considering head plus body, the horseman ranks dead last with a nice score of just 69 but jumps up by one position when we consider all armor types. With the armor out of the way, let's talk about the equipment. The main weapon of the horseman is the steel-tipped hooked spear. It has 79 thrust speed, making it the slowest spear out of all cavalry units, and this is quite bad, since the faster the spear, the more accurate the AI tends to be. The length is 235, honestly way too long for the AI, and it's in fact the longest spear out of all cavalry units. The base damage is 31, lowest out of all cavalry, that's what I got to say. But there is one thing to say about the horseman spear though. It has the chance to dismount other riders, which is quite cool. Things don't get any better when talking about the shield. The horseman brings a reinforced targ with 380 HP by a length of just 70. If you remember from the Otsworn video, their shield was not great, and this one isn't either for the same reasons. Alright, maybe the sidearm is going to be good. The horseman brings two different melee weapons. The first one is a one-handed bearded axe. It's a solid weapon, fast, is a good amount of damage and it's short. The second one is the fine cavalry broadsword. Not a very good weapon honestly, it's on the slow side for a swinger, the damage is nice but if you can't swing fast enough not really great and it's a bit on the long side for 100 infantry units but quite nice for cavalry. Now that we are done with the equipment let's get down to the stats. But first, the way I test cavalry is different from other troops. I still run through a melee efficiency test, but I have two other tests cavalry must perform. The first one is an efficiency against archers. This test should give an indication of how good the units are at dealing with archers. The second test is an efficiency versus spearmen. This test should give us an indication of how good the unit is at dealing with infantry. And the last one is a simple melee efficiency test that should be self-explanatory. Anyway, now let's talk about the actual stats. When considering the efficiency against archers, the horsemen finish last in 9th place all the times, with an average KD of 1.82 and a KD of 6.92 versus low tiers. The horsemen lost 34.86% of their units, and their average casualty chance against low tiers was 18.20%. When considering efficiency against spearmen, the horsemen once again ranked last at 9th, with an average KD of 1.7. 17 and a KD versus low of 56.4. Horsemen lost 53.43% of their units and ended up with an average casualty chance versus low of 46.8%. And finally, when considering the melee efficiency, the horsemen ranked last once more, an average KD of 2.17 and a KD versus low of 7.75. The horsemen ended up losing 57.1% of their units and average 23.27% casualty chance versus low tiers. It's not looking good for our horseman buddy, but let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. The low head armor of this unit is a killer. It just doesn't allow them to have any weight in melee. They have a 50% chance of receiving a good melee weapon, they have a bad shield, their spear is too long and slow, as a result, their cavalry AI really struggles to land shots. The overall armor of the unit is honestly quite bad, but the horse armor, on the other hand, is quite good. Even when dismounted, they are quite bad. 
making them bad in sieges. My final score is a 0 out of 5. There is just too much difference between them and any other cavalry unit. And Latinia has possibly a better option in their upgrade tree already. After dissing the veteran Falksman in my last video, we need to talk about the real man in the house. The Falksman. The Batanian Falksman is a tier 4 shock trooper of Batania, and it's one of the honorable tier 4 units I'd like to cover. Contrary from his bigger brother, the Falksman doesn't aim at taking down cavalry, but instead invests his equipment into being a specialist against infantry. The Falksman also happens to be the only shock trooper who uses a two-handed sword as a main weapon. The first thing to say when considering the equipment is the lack of throwables on this unit. This is the first Batanian unit that we cover that doesn't come with projectiles. So if your army requires throwables, you might just want to upgrade instead. The main weapon of the Falksman is the Phalanx. This weapon has a ludicrous speed of 102, making it one of the fastest swingers in Calradia. The swing damage is 126, very high, especially when we consider the speed this thing can swing at. The length is neither too short nor too long at 111, it's decent enough in pretty much all situations the Falksman will encounter. And did I mention it deals additional damage to shields? This thing is as good as an axe with the only downside being the lack of a cleave effect. Talking about the armor, the Falksman has 37 body armor, split between the rugged scale armor and the tartan shoulder harness or the shoulder harness, enough to make the Falksman rank 4th in body rankings across shock troops. At this point we know the Batanian have a common problem when it comes to helmets, and the Falksman is not different. With an average value of 37.3, brought by the rich Elm and the cap with 4 coif, this will be enough to place the Falksman in last place at 6th in the Air Armor rankings, but missing 5th place just by 1 point. When it comes to the combined value of Head Plus Body, the Falksman ranks tied last with a value of 74, a falls to last place to number 6th when we consider all armor types. These rankings are not much of a surprise, at the end of the day the Falksman is one tier lower than all the other guys. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's get down to the stats. But first, if you have found the information in this video useful, consider liking the video or subscribing. It doesn't just help the video out, but also keeps me motivated in making more. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing the time and effort I put into the testings and videos get appreciated. When considering all tests, the Falksman ranked in first place with a KD of 4.56. Ended up losing 699 units out of 3500 or roughly 20%, placing them in second place and ended up with uh, a casualty chance versus low tiers of 10.5%, placing them 4th. Ended up with a KD versus low of 14.29, placing them 5th. And ended the careers of 3184 custom battle soldiers. If you watched the veteran Falksman video, you would know that these guys perform very well against cavalry too. I ran some 300 versus 300 tests for both the tier 4 Falksman and the tier 5 Falksman, and the tier 4 Falksman average 6 times better efficiency than the veterans. All of these out of the way, we can imagine this unit is very good for the cost in comparison to its bigger bro. But how good really? Well, let's list the pros and cons. This unit can achieve better results against all kinds of troops than its tier 5 counterpart. Lacks throwables, so versatility wise it's very one dimensional. Weapon is a beast under all aspects. Shield breaker bonus. Armor is far from great. Doesn't perform very well against high tiers. Worth the denars and they are better than a tier 5. Considering this unit is a tier 4 and can punk you way above its weight, my score is a 4.5 out of 5. If only they had some sort of troubles, it would have been a 5 out of 5. You came so close, little Falksman. The Batanian veteran Falksman is the tier 5 shock trooper of Batania. With a big swingable polearm, many use this unit to take down enemy cavalry. But is he really the best at doing the job? And how does he perform against other infantrymen? Keep watching to find out. As we already said, the veteran Falksman aims more towards being a specialist at taking down cavalry, over killing infantry. This sounds like a nice fit for Batinia as they are surrounded by cavalry heavy factions and will face a low force charges in their battles. To do this role effectively, the veteran Falksman will need some decent armor and a big weapon. One of the positives of the veteran Falksman is their throwables. They have a double set of island throwing axes that deal 74 damage and deal additional bonus to 
shells. From the odds one video, we know it requires 9 access to go through a medium sized shell. So, in comparison to the odds one, the veteran Falksman only requires to land 50% more access on an enemy shell, while the odds one needed 200% extra access. So, if you're building an army that requires throw balls, this unit can serve that task decently enough. The main weapon of the veteran Falksman is the wrong fire. And yes, I'm not saying name wrong, it's different in 1.8. His weapon has a speed of 76. Respectable, but I'd be on the slow side. The swing damage is 141. Not too bad, but very far away from the 188 the Volge brings. And the worst part of this weapon is the length. That's what she said! <laughs> 203 length means this unit is unlikely to land a shot when in close combat. This unit must keep some space between them and the enemy in order to be effective. So if you plan to run these guys, grab all of the movement, polearm skill or swing speed perks that you can find. Or else this unit is no better than a tier 3. And I'm not even kidding. Looking about the armor, the veteran Falksman has 48 body armor. Combined between the kilt over plated leather and the wood land for clock. Enough to make the veteran Falksman rank second in body rankings across shock troops. Very similarly to his battle brothers, the veteran Falksman doesn't bring the best head armor, but also stays far away from the bottom places with a value of 46 brought by the rigged elm. This placed the veteran Falksman in fourth place in the head armor ranking, way above the last two places by at least 8 points. When it comes to the combined value of head plus body, the veteran Falksman ranks third but falls two places to number five when we consider all armor types. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's get down to the stats. When considering all tests, the veteran Falksman ranked comfortably in last place with a KD of just 1.52. And this is not only last place for shock troops, but all the troops I tested thus far. Ended up losing 1529 units out of 3500, or roughly 43.7% placing them in last place at 6th, and ended up with a casualty chance versus low tiers of 26.9%, placing them last at 6th. Ended up with a KD versus low of 4.66, placing them last at 6th. Ended the careers of 2,324 custom battle soldiers, and things didn't get any better against cavalry. I ran some 300 vs 300 tests for both the tier 4 Falksman and the tier 5 Falksman. The tier 4 Falksman averaged 6 times better efficiency than the veterans. Are you still convinced this unit is good? Well, if that's the case, you can just open up your custom battles and try it for yourself. With all of this out of the way, we can imagine this unit doesn't have a lot of upsides, and you would be correct. This unit fails miserably at doing the only thing it's supposed to do, heal cavalry, their weapon is low, doesn't bring enough damage and get stuck. They require some very specialized captain builds to just work as well as other troops. They do bring six throwing axes and with a number like that, the impact on the fight is pretty solid. Their armor is solid all around, but can carry a bad weapon. They are far worse than the tier 4 of the same line. This unit is one of the few that deserves a 0 out of 5. Use them at your own risk, as any other unit in the game performs better. The only thing they offer over any other unit is... Increase medicine, I guess. After the Wildling, we have to talk about his shielded brother in arms, the Otsworn. In comparison to the Wildling, the Otsworn aims to be less of a skirmisher and more of your typical line holder and projectiles tank. To do this effectively, this unit needs a good sidearm, decent armor, and a big shield. I'm going to address the major problem with this unit immediately, and that is the troop line. Differently from the Wild Ring, the Otsworn line doesn't specialize in throwables, exception made for the Clan Warrior at tier 2, who brings one set of daggers. So, if you're building an army that uses throwables as a winning strategy, you might want to stay away from this unit entirely. But if you don't, and you decide to go for the Otsworn anyway, they're going to bring one set of island throwing axes. They deal a respectable 74 damage, and from 1.8, they deliver additional bonus to shields. I don't think the bonus is enough if it takes this many axes to go through a shield. When it comes to tanking projectiles, the Otsworn brings a 
Iron Reinforced Island Large Shield. On paper, this shield looks not too bad, but until you realize that its length is only 70 apparently, and there are gaps that allow for head or arm shots. Yeah, this piece of equipment is not the greatest shield for infantry. It just exposes too much of the unit, especially from side shots. Just for comparison, one of the best shields for blocking projectiles has 110 length, 36% longer. The Otsun does come with a steel tipped hook spear that can spear brace too. Remember though, when you want to make your unit brace, you have to tell them to hold fire, or this will happen. As it stands right now, spears still need a lot of work to be effective, so I wouldn't consider them a plus until Tailwords finds a way to make them work better. The sidearm of the Otsuon is a pretty decent one-handed bearded axe. The weapon has all of what you need on an infantryman, short, fast and deals a good amount of damage. Talking about the armor, the Otsuon has 62 body armor, split between the luxury brigandine and the reinforced harness with cape, enough to make the Otsuon rank 3rd in body rankings. Very similar to his battle brother, the Otsuon also lacks head armor, with an average value of 36, split between the rich helm and the rough scale helmet. This place the Otsuon in 7th place in the head armor rankings, just above the wildling by 11 points. When it comes to the combined value of head plus body, the Otson ranks middle of the pack at 4th, but falling one place to number 5 when we consider all armor types. Now let's talk about the important stats, the melee efficiency. After all, everything we want from our infantrymen is to be nasty and take the enemies down. The Otswarns ended up with a KD ratio of 4.45 ranking them 6th across shielded infantry. Versus tier 1, the Otson didn't start well, racking up 435 kills and losing 3 soldiers. A KD ratio of 146, and the 3 casualties ended up being 0.5% of the total combining for 6 plays. Versus tier 2, the Otsons again didn't do well when compared to others, killing 443 and losing 16, a KD ratio of 28 rounded up. The 16 losses ended up accounting for 2.6% of the total casualties, and this time the unit ranked 7. Versus tier 2 militia, the Otsuan got 491 kills and lost 7 troops, a KD ratio of 70. The 7 lost troops counted for 1.1% of the total casualties, the unit ranked 6. Versus tier 3, the Otsuans got 430 kills and lost 22 units, a KD ratio of 20 rounded up. The 22 lost troops counted for 3.5% of the total casualties. This was surprisingly good for the unit as it ranked 4th across all participants. Versus tier 3 militia, the Otsuan got 365 kills and lost 12 units, a KD ratio of 30. The 12 lost troops counted for 1.9% of the total casualties. Another decent result placing the Otsuan 4th. Versus tier 4, the Otsuans got 400 kills and lost 97 units, a KD ratio of 4. The 97 lost troops counted for 15.6% of the total casualties, placing the Otsuan in another 4th place. And lastly, versus tier 5, the Otsuans got 209 kills and lost 430 units, a KD ratio of 0.5. The 430 casualties ended up being 74.8% of the total, placing the Otsuan 5th. Overall, the Otso ranks 6th in KD across all tests with a score of 4.45, ended up losing 623 units out of 3500 or roughly 18%, placing them 7th, ended up with a score versus low tiers of 9.63%, placing them 7th, and ended the careers of 2775 custom battle soldiers. There are a few upsides to this unit and many downsides. It's a unit that does struggle way more than its competitors against low tiers, but seems to pick up steam against mid to high tiers. The versatility is decent with one set of throwing axes, but not quite enough to make a real impact. The body armor of the unit is solid, but the head is lackluster. Combine that with a weird shape shield that allows for arrows to bypass him more frequently than other infantrymen, and you can't even rely on these guys to tank incoming volleys too well. The sidearm is nice, as it has all of what I look for in a one-handed weapon, fast, short and decent damage, but a few good pieces mixed with a lot of questionable ones doesn't make for a good unit. I'd give the Otsworn a 1.5 out of 5.
The Wildling is one of the three infantry units that composes the Batanian Doctrine. Unlike most shielded infantry units in Bannerlord, the Wildling doesn't specialize in holding the lines and fighting in melee, but instead invests his equipment or lack of thereof, in a more specialized skirmisher style. After the 1.7 update, the Wildling received an additional set of 5 javelins, adding up to its original 5, making it the only tier 5 infantry unit that carries 10 javelins. And this allows for the Wildling to have one of the most unique playstyles in the game, making it an outcast in most normal armies. Considering what we already stated, it should be no surprise that skirmisher isn't well armored. But the Wildling makes for quite a unique case. Its body armor is actually pretty nice, with a total value of 69, making this unit the tankiest at dealing with body shots. Since body and headshots combine for roughly 90% of received hits, having such an high value is a big thumbs up. But sometimes, something that looks promising at first can come crashing down real fast. And for the Wildling, this would be the helmet. The Wildling's helmet is a mere 25 armor piece. Just for reference, the best average headpiece out of the shielded infantryman is 52. More than double the armor of the Wildling. The Wildling doesn't even rank very high on combined values like head plus body or total armor, ranking second to last and last respectfully. When it comes to weapons, the Wildling brings a fine steel cavalry broadsword and it's quite simply a bad weapon. It's long for infantry, it's low, and doesn't even bring all that much damage. But the real deal when it comes to wildlings are the javelins. Two sets of 5 oak javelins dealing a base damage of 117. There isn't much bad to say about javelins. I do like an infantryman that can throw, especially when I'm on the attack. And the wildlings does that fairly well. But let me now dive deep into the melee stats of this unit. Since this is my first video of this format in 1.8, I'd like to clarify the way I test and the reasoning behind it. First, I test all of the units against the Imperial lines, as the Empire makes up for roughly half of the map. Fighting Imperial units will be very common, and they should make for a good baseline. I have a few ways I like to data gather for troops. One of them is a simple KD ratio, the other takes into consideration the total percentage of down soldiers in all tests, and the last one takes into consideration the percentage of down soldiers against tier 3 and less, the latter being the most important. The reason I value the effectiveness against low tiers very high is because it's very rare to fight against stacked armies in the vanilla game, but if you are more interested in the high tier versus high tier situations then don't worry, I have the data for you too. Just keep watching. The Wildling KD ratio across tests fighting against all tiers and militia of the Empire is a mere 2.7. Needless to say, it's the worst out of all shielded infantry with only two shock troops being worse. And I'm now counting the Blandian Pikemen. When it comes to the percentage of downed units across all tests, the Wildling once again performed horribly, racking up 29.3% casualties over 3,500 soldiers. That would be around 1,000 units dead or wounded. And it doesn't get any better when we only take into consideration low tiers. The Wildlings racked up 34.3% of its total casualties just against tier 3 or less. Just for comparison, the second worst performer in this category only ended up with 14.2%. Still, there are two shock troops who did worse than this. With all of the data out of the way, my final judgement on this unit can be good, but also, I don't want to be too harsh on them. It's clear the Wildling is not your typical infantryman, and I should value as much. Yes, these guys are awful at melee fighting, and practically any other infantryman will be better, but you don't bring them to a fight you plan to play defensively. You want to be the aggressor, using their throwables to your advantage and overwhelm the enemy with numbers. Like this. Anyway, this was me trying to give you guys as much information as possible over one unit in as little time as I could. I plan on covering all high tier and some honorable low tiers in the future, but to do so I need your support. If you don't know you already, reaching 1000 subs for a YouTube channel is both the hardest and most rewarding thing to do. This opens up a channel to a wider range of tools, mainly community posts, to make sure more people find this information. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.